Hey y'all, Pastor Steve Berger here with This Is That, where we bring biblical clarity to cultural chaos. And we are now in our sixth episode of This Fabulous Fear. We've been talking about the fear of the Lord and how fabulous it is and why we should have it and what it produces. And this is really, really exciting to me because I made this outlandish statement uh, in our first week that the fear of the Lord actually excuse me, actually produces everything that we're looking for in life. And so now we're unpacking all of these passages of scripture. I call them prescriptures. It's like scriptures that are written for us to bring us spiritual health, life, and vitality. So we've been looking at all of these prescriptures. And um, listen, I hope and pray, man, that you're applying these to your life. It's, it's one thing to read them, and to understand them, it's another thing to believe for them and to say, God, you said, God, you said that you would do this. Now do this in me and do this through me and do this for my wife and do this for my children and do this for my children's children because God, you said the fear of the Lord would produce these things. And so I want to encourage you not just to hear and listen or, or to even think, oh man, that would be wonderful, but to believe for these very promises. When I started last week's message where we kind of turned the corner from why we should have the fear of the Lord to what it produces, uh, this first verse, Psalm 31, verse 19, I want to start with it again today because it's just so rich. Psalm 31, 19, oh, how great is your goodness, which you have laid up for those who fear you, which you have prepared for those who trust in you in the presence of the sons of men. I love it. God's, God's favor produces a great goodness, a multifaceted, extravagant goodness. And it's laid up, the scripture says, for those who fear him. It's prepared, he goes on and says, for those who trust him. So friends, do you realize this? That because you're fearing God, because you're holding him in reverential awe and worship, and because you're hating evil and departing from it, that God has stuff laid up for you. He's got it prepared for you. He's got things that he, in his own perfect timing, is going to download into your life. You're going to get a windfall of his goodness. Now, I'm not even going to pretend to know what that's going to look like in your life, but I just know that the scripture says that if we'll fear him, will experience his great goodness, that he's got stuff laid up for us, he's got stuff prepared for us, and we need to believe him for those things, okay? Now, these promises that we're, that we're going to continue to look at, these promises encompass at least six different areas of your life, and, and many times we'll see, as again today, that there's overlap in these six areas. In other words, a specific scripture will pronounce a blessing on both you and your family and on your finances. We we saw that last week and we could pick it up again today with our, our next prescripture, Psalm 103, verse 17. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. Do you need some mercy? Good. Fear God. Hate evil. Depart from it. Hold God in reverential awe and worship and fresh morning mercy will kiss you every time you open your eyes. I love this. I love it. The mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness, listen, to children's children. God's righteousness goes to my grandchildren, not just me or my children, but to my grandchildren. Now, Sarah and I have been blessed. We've got five grandchildren so far and and watching my, my kids raise them in the fear of the Lord, watching my kids pass on to their kids what was um, um, lived out and demonstrated for them of, of what it's like to walk with the Lord and to trust him and to fear him. Watching my kids do that now with their kids and watching my grandkids um, you know, grow in the grace and knowledge of Jesus, man, it's an awesome thing. There's, there's nothing like it. We are watching the multi-generational, multi-faceted, extravagant goodness of God happen because the word of God is true, beloved. It's true for you. Believe it, appropriate it, and watch it happen. 
Proverbs 14, 26. Man, I, I love this one. This is so timely. In the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence and his children will have a place of refuge. Beloved, listen to me. When we walk in the fear of the Lord, our children benefit by having a place of refuge, a place of safety, a shelter from the storms of life, a haven from the attacks that are on them out in the world. And man, they need it today more than ever. Our homes, listen to me, mom and dad, our homes need to be infinitely more holy than what's going on out in the world. What our kids and grandkids are subjected to on a daily basis. For those of you who have kids or grandkids in public schools, I am so beyond concerned. I would almost say I'm terrified for what's being taught our kids and grandkids in public schools today. Man, do anything that you can. Get your kids in a good Christian school. If you can't get them in a good Christian school, man, can you homeschool your children? And if you can't homeschool your children, can you be involved enough with your kids' education? Can you be involved enough with the curriculum and the school board and the principal and the teachers to know and to watch what your kids are being taught? Listen, man, God has determined for those of us who fear the Lord, that our homes and our parenting should produce a place of refuge, a place of security and safety for our children. And again, our kids need it more now, more than ever, because there's so much sin, so much sensu sen sensuality, excuse me, in insecurity going on in our kids and our young people's lives, man. Um, we have to start walking in the fear of the Lord so that our, our children will have a place of refuge in our presence, in the home that we provide for them. Listen, I, I want my house to be, and by the grace of God, it has been. I pray it will continue to be. I want our home to be a place of refuge for my children and for my grandchildren. I want it to be a place where they have a strong confidence where there is that sense of security, where they, they're strongly confident that they know they're going to be loved and accepted and protected and taught the word and the will and the ways of God, that they're going to be instructed in what's right. See, all of that happens because grandma and grandpa and mom and dad fear the Lord and walk in his ways and make his ways known to the next generation. And then we see the goodness of God touch generation after generation. Uh, let me let me switch for a minute and and add a couple more uh, back, a couple quick promises to last week's teaching on finances, uh, because the fear of the Lord. We talked about it a bit last week. Again, there's overlap today with more prescriptions, but in fearing God, there is the promise, beloved, of God blessing our finances. Proverbs twenty two verse four: By humility and the fear of the Lord, our riches and honor and life. Let me ask you a question. Do riches, honor, and life sound good to you? Good. Well, it comes by humility and it comes by the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord plays a very, very important role in whether riches and honor and life and vitality and goodness are in our lives. And so as we fear God, we obey God with our finances. We do what God says with our finances. We don't do what the world says. We don't do what our flesh says. We do what God says. We follow his lead. And then blessing comes upon our finances. We've got far too many followers of Jesus who don't obey what God says to do with their finances. They don't fear God with their finances. And because of it, man, they're radically in debt. They're extended too much. We got moms and dads working multiple jobs to try to make ends meet because they're they're operating in the ways of the world rather than in the fear of the Lord. And so I would encourage you, man, make sure that you're doing with your finances what God says to do. Make sure you're fearing God with your finances so that riches and honor and life can be yours. Um, let me give you another um, prosperity promise 
that uh, I, I love it. It has kind of a comical uh, uh, part to it now. I, in the old days, it wouldn't have mattered, but now, you know, it's, it's interesting. Malachi chapter four, verse two, God says, but to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness, speaking of Jesus, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings and you shall go out, here you go, and grow fat like a stall-fed calf. Now, I know most of us are trying to not be fat anymore, but here's what God's promise is to us. He says, man, if you'll fear my name, if you'll walk in the fear of the Lord, here's what I'm gonna do for you. I'm gonna bless you and prosper you enough Man, you're going to grow fat. You're going to have an abundance just like a stall-fed calf. You'll be increasing in your blessing. And again, it comes as we fear him. All right, now let's move on from areas of family and finance to the areas of our physical life and our personal life. Look at these promises as it relates to our physical life first. Psalm 33, verses 18 and 19. Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him and those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. The eye of the Lord is on those who, what? Who fear him. His eye is on us. And then what does he promise? He promises us that he'll deliver our soul from death and he'll keep us alive in famine. See, I read that and I go, what, what is it? What is the root of this? What's really going on here? What's the promise of God? The promise of God here to me as I read this is this simple. When you fear God, what touches other people doesn't have to touch you. Though there might be famine and death in the land, though it might be taking other people out, though harsh circumstances or bad economy or whatever might be taking other people out who don't fear God, you as someone who follows Jesus and fears the Lord, you don't have to worry about that. His eye is on you. He's got you. There's nothing that comes your way that God hasn't allowed. God never sits in heaven and goes, oh man, Sorry, that one got by me. No, his eye is on you and his eye is on you to be merciful to you, to deliver your soul from death and to keep you alive in famine. That is a promise of God. Make sure you hold that and claim that and believe that. Psalm 34, seven, our next one. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. What is the promise? If you'll fear God, the angel of the Lord will encamp all around you. And what's he gonna do? He's gonna deliver you. Angel encampments all around us to deliver us. How cool is that? Now, most of the time we read this and we go, okay, God's going to deliver us from this, this horrible thing that is maybe in process of happening or has happened and God's gonna come through and deliver us. I want to add one more facet to this. I think when we get to heaven, we're going to see what the angel of the Lord and his encamping around us produced for us, things that we never even were aware of. In other words, the angel of the Lord prevented things from happening before they even happened, right? That's what prevent means. So often we're thinking of, okay, he's going to deliver us from what happened, but what didn't come our way because the angel of the Lord prevented it from happening. I have no idea, but beloved, I think when we get to heaven, we're going to see in HD in heaven definition, we're going to be able to see things that never even got into our atmosphere, never even got into our world because the angel, the angels of the Lord even prevented them from ha happening. The, the heaven's host encompassed us, surrounded us, protected us, and prevented things from coming our way. I love the thought of that. How about this? Malachi chapter four, verse two. But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness will arise with healing in his wings. Physical healing, friends, it's part of the blessing that comes to those who fear God. Now, I don't want you to get locked up about this. The, the mystery of why healing doesn't always happen or why it didn't take place. Don't, don't allow that to keep you 
from believing that healing can happen this time. I understand that God is sovereign. I understand that if everybody got healed of everything all the time, there would be no need for heaven. We'd already be in heaven. I understand that we're going to have sickness and disease sometimes, and sometimes even to the point of death. But, listen to me, but physical healing here on earth, right here, right now, is something that God does for those who fear him, for those who walk in his ways. And so we need to know that and understand that, that physical healing, it is part of the price that Jesus paid. By his stripes, we are healed. The scripture says it repeatedly, and we need to believe that and trust that, but it comes as we fear the Lord. What about our personal life? Psalm 25, verse 12. Who is the man who fears the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way he chooses. I love this. Who's the man that fears the Lord? What's the promise? That God is going to hand teach you in the way that he chooses that is right for you. God will teach us the direction, the way that we should go when we fear him. Do you need direction in your life right now? Man, fear God. Hold him in reverential awe and worship. Hate evil and depart from it. Draw near to him consistently, desperately, and he will show you what you should do. He'll do that for you. He'll teach you in the way that you that he chooses for you. Psalm 25, verse 14, just two verses later. The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him, and he will show them his covenant the secret of the Lord. I love this. God's intimate and personal communion and communication is with those who fear him. And those who experience intimacy with God, they are going to see his covenant promises come to pass for them. They won't just hear about the blessing of God. God will show them the blessing of God. The Great goodness of God, the multifaceted, extravagant goodness of God will be theirs, listen to me, because they are in a fearful relationship with God. They hold him in awe and wonder and worship. And because of that intimate worship, full kind of lifestyle and relationship with God, God downloads into us the secrets of the Lord, the direction of the Lord, the blessing of the Lord. It all comes. Psalm 33, 18, behold, again, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him. We saw that uh, a moment ago, but again, to let you know, God's got you. His eye is on you. He hasn't rejected you, forsaken you, cast you off. He's watching what's going on and you're going, Steve, I wish you would quit watching and start working. He will in his own time, but he's got his eye on you. He knows what's up. He's not going to let you fall or fail. He's just not. Psalm 145, verse 19, another prescripture. God will fulfill the desire of those who fear him. He will also hear their cry and save them. God fulfills the desires of those who fear him. Why? Because when you fear him, his desires are your desires. Your desires are his desires. And so God comes through for you and fulfills your desires. That's how this works. When you fear God, your desires, what you want in life, are so in line with what God's will is for your life that God comes through with a yes and an amen for what you're desiring. Man, quit desiring the things of the flesh. Quit desiring the nonsense of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. And start fearing God and let his desires become yours and vice versa, and then watch God come through for you. Psalm 147, verse 11. The Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his mercy, God takes pleasure in you when you fear him. It means that he is affectionately favorable toward you and he enjoys when you fear him. Listen, we try to make these analogies with our own kids or grandkids or whatever, but man, when, you're, when your kids and grandkids want you and not just what you can do for them, but they want you 
What does it cause you to do? It causes you to take pleasure in them. It causes you to be affectionately favorable toward them. And then it causes you to bless them. It's the same with God. When you start with fearing him, and he, he loves that, he responds to that with intimate communication with you, with direction, with instruction, with secrets. And then with all these other blessing men, it's all about having a relationship that's rooted in the fear of the Lord. And God loves that from his kids. It causes him to then bless us in huge ways. So again, just to wrap this up, when I see all that God is and all that God does for those who fear him and believe what it'll produce, it, it produces a security in me, a confidence in me, the blessing he provides that it covers my me and my family, my finances, my physical life, my personal life, that he's got me covered, that his eye is on me, that he takes pleasure in me. Man, why would I not fear God? Why would I not hold him in reverential awe and worship? Why would I not hate evil and depart from it? Why would I compromise? Why would I live a sinful life for temporary sinful pleasure? No way, no way, no way. I want to keep reiterating that to you. Fear God. Love God. Watch God bless you. Watch God be intimate with you. That's how this thing works, okay? So these truths, these promises, they keep us anchored under the shadow of his wing. We're not going to go outside looking for fulfillment or satisfaction in satanic sinful pleasures. No way. I'm staying put right in the fear of the Lord and in the multifaceted extravagant goodness of God. God bless you guys. Thank you for listening. Make sure be a social media missionary. Share these truths with people. We are living in a day when men don't fear God and it's creating havoc and chaos in the world. Make sure you share this with someone so that they can understand what it is to fear God, so that they can live a blessed life, so that they can be confident and secure and find a place of refuge in the goodness of God. We love you, we'll see you next time. God bless you guys.